introduce myself. My name is Marcos Figueri. And I am the vice president of Artners. We are a nonprofit in Sacramento, El Gro, California. We run a program called Mural Expressions. And I was invited by Alpha to further share on that project um, a little later, but that's who I am. So an artist, producer, and uh, definitely a creator. <laughs> great, great, great. Welcome. Um, looking forward to um, an update. Um, you guys were on uh, last year and talking about this placemaking project that you're doing in partnership with Caltran and the uh, 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 under, well, that, what is it, that under pillar freeway project, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the update with that is um, we still are waiting for Caltrans to finish their construction underneath the freeway area, which stretches from 6th Street to 24th Street in length of any typical city block in any city. So it's got some about 300 feet per block. So it's a stretch of a corridor stretch that we are developing and we are going to be painting murals underneath on the freeway structural columns holding up the bridge. And right. with that, with that project, we are doing a Sacramento centric calling to showcase some of the history and some of the events and some of the action that is not necessarily seen in the typical historical telling ways of cities. So our push is to find some of these great uh, stories and share them for the world to see. So, so how, many artists, have, um, how many artists do you have already um, committed to doing some of the pillars? We have, well, that's because it, it comes in different forms. We have a lot of people that are committed doing one of the other programs, but the ones that actually filled out the application were about 25 artists. Wow. Great some job. of those are, are uh, thank you. Some of those are still with their application needed to be uh, adjusted, but they are definitely working on there to get it completed. So we're calling them completed now. The caveat for this project though, for unfortunately for us is two things. The city, even though we have this grand view to uplift Sacramento's uh, visual landscape, they are not going to allow us to go from block to block to build excitement. We are only going to be able to do one block at a time. That puts some constraints of how we see the layout, but it's something that we're going to try to adjust along the way because we don't want to. We don't want to create, say, if a bunch of people or the great artists of our region put a bunch of great pictures of the nature around Sacramento and they were all valid pictures and, and it fit the bill of calling, we wouldn't want to put all those pillars in one area. We would want to try to put them throughout the whole corridor. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So right now we have a good diversity of different art from cultural heritage to nature and a few other subjects along the way. Here's the other caveat is each column is $6,500 and the city will not allow us to work outside of our budget. So whatever we could afford is what we're going to paint. Mm -hmm. The reason why we have a few more columns gonna, that are going to be painted is I'm going to donate five columns on my side and Teresa, my partner, is going to donate two or three on her side to throw into the bill that we have all these ready to go. The other part about it is this is not a festival. So we're only going to do a few columns at a time. And once we get started, we're hoping that that will engage the supporting atmosphere and we can find some more donations or some more leads that we can write grants for the following year. But the way we have it set up right now, we should be able to paint consistently for a good 11 months with the budget that we have. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's our plan. We're liable to sit down with the city and the city may say, all right, we want this block done in three months. And then that'll be a new plan that we'll have to adjust to. 
So who are you working with with the city of Sacramento? We are working with Donald Ginsler. Oh, Donald. He's a, yeah, he's our point man. And that's who we have, that's the only person we've ever really talked to after he had taken a uh, leadership role. Okay. So you're in the midst of Every fundraising too and, and still <clears throat> doing uh, the grant writing, right? Fundraising, grant writing, and keeping myself in shape so I can knock these pillars out myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, definitely fundraising all the time and just we have another program, and I don't have it with me, but 15 inch tall replica models that mm -hmm. we make. And we've titled those the WXM Community Connectors. And this is another way that the artist can get involved and paint the small model and then tell a more intimate story that relates to them in Sacramento. Some things that Caltrans will not accept on their pillars are advertisements and texts and things of religious uh, affiliations, even though they are cultural, they're, they kind of lean into the religious section. Caltrans is probably not going to accept those. But a small community connector, the artists are just free to tell their sacramental story the way they want to. And then we use these as our fundraisers and then hopefully, uh, not hopefully, but the artists can push the narrative that they are, that's important to them. And it's, you know, like if you, for example, I personally did a column that may not get accepted that represents the factory at Campbell's Soup in Sacramento that got torn down. And I've already been told that they probably are not going to accept that because it says Campbell's Soup. It's a, it looks like an advertisement. But, and other people have done stores and certain things that will not get really allowed, but these connectors are pretty, pretty exciting to have. Do you so, have your, gonna, um, uh, do you have your website available to pull up um, the video of that project? The, I don't. What's, have it on what's the your website? website? Give me your website so I can. Um, we, we don't have it on the, we don't have, but I'll give you the website, but we don't have it uploaded yet. It's still on ABC 10, but the website is mural expressions.com. And the other website is Artners. Can you put it in the, in the chat for us, please? Yes. And that way I can look it up for you because I'm really, uh, I really want to see your ABC um, 5. Uh, how long was that documentary or? Um, um, Three minutes. Yeah, I really wanted to see that as well. It was a pretty cool one. Uh, how do I do this? In, how do I do this in the? In the chat? Yeah. You on your cell phone? Yes. Okay. I see uh, Liza, more. Liza, are you available to help? Um, are you still? Um, chat. I got it. Okay, great. Just put it in the chat, and then that way we could click into it and take a look at it. Um, before um, Ashley, you only have fifteen minutes today. Hello, Ashley. Hello. Oh, Ashley. Yes, I'm here. Um, you only have 15 more minutes to be with us today? Yes, I do. Okay. So um, while Marco is getting everything ready for his website and for us to take a look at the um, the, the really great article uh, or interview they did with uh, the ABC TV News, um, if you want to give an update about your project, and always start off by reintroducing yourself and, um, you know, um, right. and where are you at with the fellowship? Um, okay, well, hi everyone, I'm Ashley Green. Um, I'm a history major at CSUS Sacramento and I am the um, library archivist for Sojo uh, Truth Museum. Uh, truthfully, Alpha, I wasn't prepared to give an update for today, so I really don't have anything. Um, I do plan to meet with James Scott uh, from the Sacramento Room and I also plan to meet with Shauna on Friday. Right, and we do have a Zoom meeting that's set up um, and where all of our library partners will be meeting on Friday. So I'm looking forward um, to pulling us all together 
Um, the um, Martin Luther King Library has been in partnership with Sojourner Truth for over 15 years, mm -hmm. um, doing uh, regular programming there. Um, we have letters of support from um, the old branch. Um, well, the branch manager that just retired had been a very good advocate for the museum. Um, mm -hmm. the, well, in that partnership, um, the library sponsored the Tala project. And that's where we have these young, uh, talented musicians um, um, that are they were learning about music. Uh, they also had a camp that was um, um, a summer camp that was staged at the museum, I mean, at the library in partnership with the museum. And other ways that they've supported was with technical assistance, um, you know, for museum parents and uh, youth that attended programs. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's been a really, um, really, and the other project um, that the library supported was Mommy and Me Scribble Scrabble. And that was funded through uh, Sacramento First Five with parents or grandparents that had children zero to five under that program. Mm -hmm. And we got a grant um, and we used the library to stage the, uh, um, you know, that program. And, the and it was very oh, wow. successful, you know. So we've been around a while in terms of this community uh, engagement piece with the library and the museum as the museum has been growing uh, over the years. And so during COVID, what happened, of course, you know, um, we as developers, myself and Daphne, were continuing to, to write um, the library into our programming plan. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like the first meeting that we all will have um, with the supervisor of that branch. Um, and uh, that's why I kind of wanted you to wait until we have this meeting before mm -hmm. back, coming back to the museum. Um, so that mm -hmm. we can all introduce ourselves. It's all a, 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 like a, what do you call it? A level playing ground because everyone on this team are new people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they came over to the um, uh, kickoff of Earth Day, uh, kickoff of the beautification project with Sojourner Truth, well, Foreign Road Community Beautification Project. Mm -hmm. um, and they came over as one of our partners on last Saturday or Saturday before last and uh, introduced themselves. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I met with the community engagement, uh, Ricardo, um, at another community festival. So it's all about how libraries now are really interfacing with their community partners in, in that kind of community engagement. So it's going to be an interesting conversation um, mm -hmm. that we all are having with each other. And I think that all of the partners are coming together, you know, at a good time, um, you know, all at the same time. With. Okay, so would you like for me to um, maybe um, postpone my meeting with James and Shauna individually until after we meet on Friday? Well, when are you planning on meeting with them when Thursday? Um, well, I was hoping to meet with uh, Shauna tomorrow, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. And I haven't um, really figured out my schedule to meet with James yet because okay, I know. So I think that this is a good introduction tomorrow. I mean, on Friday when we all meet. Mm -hmm. And then that way, from that introduction meeting where we're all on Zoom, um, and then, you know, um, then it'll be a time to kind of set some schedules. Okay, and that works. You, you do it that way. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, but I'm really excited about how this partnership is finally coming together, where, <laughs> where we're back together. And I'm not going to ever say post-COVID, but um, in a, in a post-kind of COVID world, mm -hmm. when we're all coming back into programming, you know, and it's really, um, it was really exciting to see how the library is now coming from being in the library and being out in public and showing up to these events. Um, and they want to see how well um, that we all will start working together. And then it'll be a good way for you to um, see how you're going to set up your program as a fellow. You know, um, so you did get my email where uh, I sent them all of the information, the narrative, um, you know, uh, what, how we were funded through IMLS and that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. So that way you'll have that background when you go in and start talking and meeting. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, and then uh, we'll probably um, have a discussion with you and Lisa. Um, I think she's working today. She has she is a, a head librarian and on the board there in Wil Wilmette. So um 
all of those kind of all tie in together. Okay. Yeah. So okay. any other any other questions that you have today? Um, no, not today, but if I have any before our meeting on Friday, I'll let you know. All right. And I um, uh, saw a video on, as we're going to play Marco's link, I saw a video that I saved from the Black Abyss. Um, and I would like for you to, I don't know, like, I'm not going to say homework, but do this research on mm -hmm. uh, the latest episode that the Black Abyss archivist here in Chicago, how they produce their series and think about how you want to start presenting um, on public research station. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna put that link um, in the um, chat right now so that you'll have it. You know, okay. thank we'll you. basically um, have it as well. Um, I don't wanna play it, so um, I didn't, um, share with uh, Marco. So I'm getting ready to, to load up your video as soon as I drop this down into the uh, uh, chat for Ashley. Yeah, and I thought that uh, I, I kind of like their format and you can think about, you know, like how you want to put it together. Mm -hmm. Any other um, questions you have for me today? I know your time, you have about 10 more minutes. Let's see. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any other questions. Okay, Marco, I'm gonna try to... Um, the the last link is the story link. The what? The last one I sent is the story link. Okay, I should go to... Okay, just a moment. You sent two? Okay. I sent two websites and then one's the one's the link to the story. This, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll see if you can hear this one. That's not the link. No, that's the one they sent me. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had started playing though. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay. All right. Back to share. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. All right. So when I was there in Sacramento, I they're doing some other things with um when I was passing through this area, they were doing some other things with trying to, I thought it was there's putting some uh, support beams there or something where they're laying over new concrete. You know about that process that they're, they're working on? The, they were putting, they were putting a new lane into the freeway. Uh-huh. And they added a whole new structural column to support that. And now yeah, you have was, a whole center, a center lane, an HOV lane. And what section is this one right here? So all of these under here, how, you said again, how many? I know you said how many blocks, but how many pillars? There's 28 pillars per block. And we're proposing seven blocks plus a few extra that sit on some on ramps. So it's coming out to approximately over 200 pillars, but barely over 200 pillars. 196, do the math real quick. Let's see here. Yeah, then I think there's like six, uh, over on 18th Street on the on-ramp coming up to 16th Street, there's a, a few more pillars. There's a couple pillars that are um, going down X Street, going towards Oak Park. So they also may be uh, possibly addressed, but they're going to hold us to one block at a time. See what see what we do. And yeah, this is really interesting. I thought it was a video. It's just a photograph of the article. No, no, that was the video that they sent me. Okay. I'm, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I'm pop it up online. Yeah. Okay. So I'll um. 
But when I when I hit that same link, I pop it up and then it's to the point. And there's a video ready to push. So I just I just hit the same link. Okay. Maybe that's hmm. this one right here that I didn't want to show. I didn't want to show a pizza. Maybe they you know how they do commercials in the front. Hmm. Let's skip the like ads. Average. Yeah, get the ad. The portion of Highway Here 50 that runs between W and Here we go. is getting a complete makeover with the help of a group called Artners. The underbelly will soon become a mural museum. Photojournalist Xavier URT spoke with the brains behind the idea. Well, the Artners, Los Artineros. Well, the, the word Artners and, and the meaning itself is um, those who have made the commitment to live on the creative path. I started out, um, I was working for the state of California Department of Public Health. I was uh, going through a divorce and I needed to make ends meet, so I uh, picked up my brushes and started painting again. Ardner's uh, started from my company, which is West Coast Images, a mural uh, production company that started in 1996, 97 in Sacramento. Yeah, Marcos and Teresa Artners uh, approached us, I think it was about 2019, about doing a project underneath the freeway. At that time, we as a city had not done a project with Caltrans in, in some years. When we approached this project, we, we thought of many things. One of the things was we wanted the art to represent some of the people that don't get represented. We wanted to make this a project for Sacramento, of Sacramento. We want to honor inspirational people in Sacramento as well. This is going to be a change to the landscape of what we have been seeing in our community since we've started the murals in our community. There's 28 columns per block and we want to go from 24th Street to 6th Street. We can do anybody on the pillars and any subjects on the pillars that meet the criteria but to have the artists, the local artists here doing it um, it's so super important. You know, you need to see art of the community that you're in that represents you. And the same concept with the art that you see should be done by some of the talent that's in the city. This project, we don't receive any public art funds. So we have to fundraise ourselves and we have to write grant after grant after grant to possibly get some. That's just the way it happens with Caltrans on this project. Caltrans owns this project and they own other projects that they are funding currently but for ours the challenge is, is that we have to earn our own funding through clean california caltrans started just working with so many different cities and different organizations that um, we're starting to kind of really work collaboratively together in what i see as a really great way clean california is a 1.2 billion dollar initiative that was passed by the governor and the state legislature there's also a beautification uh, portion of the initiative which is going to incorporate a lot of public art and design into our freeway and highway systems. We have enough to do a block, but the fundraiser is going to always have to be all the time, all the time, all the time. I think what is, is compelling, you know, for, for all of us is the interest that the Artners have in really telling these different stories from different artists in that space and organizing it in some way that kind of makes some sense. They felt like it would be a way to kind of include a number of different artists' voices in one area. These are a collection of storytelling importance of our region. So we feel that's going to be the gravity to what we're doing. And this project is looking for sponsors. We have more information and we have a link to the projects on our website at abc10.com slash to the point. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Good job. Thank Good you. job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I really like the, uh, the way it's coming. Would you say, um, and, and I like the way, you know, like you're doing this whole um, history, you know, like this whole, like, because we're all about like, you know, maintaining these museums, museum practice, and to taking this whole concept of the outdoor museum walk. Yes. Um, 
And, and I know we shared with you um, while I was linking to that, I'm going to look for the link with, with the preservation. Laura Weather shared with you last year to kind of connect with the, with the you know, um, there was the grants that were for infrastructural grants, you know, to start yes. that and start kind of shaping that uh, for the money that's coming in and uh, see how we can set that up. You know. Okay, we have to re, re uh, look at that ourselves because it's yeah. coming back to that time. So let me look also, I'm gonna pull up your um, um, website and look at the campaign that you're doing so that we could share that on Pop-Up Research Station. And again, um, with Pop-Up Research Station, the um, we post our recordings, you know, so that they're they're public and they're being archived. I think it's the same. I think, I don't know. Um, there you come back. You're back, great. You're having a little bit of trouble with your internet, you froze. Did I? I'm yes. fine, I can, I'm good oh. on this side. Oh, okay, yeah. maybe it's me. Yeah, I um, am just pulling up uh, one of the uh, links that uh, was just sent. Well, I guess I lost the link. How do I see? There it is. Yeah, we're talking about, um, I don't know if you were listening in, um, where uh, Marcos is sharing their story. And, and how many years has this been in the making now? Marco. 2019. We started January 1st, 2019 is our official kickoff. It was actually in 2018 where we were putting Facebook posts, but it was 2019 that we started meeting with the mayor and the city council of that district. Are you seeing, I'm sharing the, um, the muralist um, that are part of the team now? These were uh, the muralists. This was part of some other festivals that we had painted, started. This was like the lead up to the WX, where we mm -hmm. had some South Sacramento mural festivals with the same model of bringing people together and representing their cultural heritage in a different form. Wow. Some of those are still around with us. Nick is Shona in there, the young Shona. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, I saw that on the website when I was kind of looking for you guys' profiles and stuff. I came across this, um, um, and you have some more artists on your website um, that you've been working with, but you're doing a really um, great job on the landscape of, of the mural movement in. Um, Sacramento, you know. So I know you, you guys are showing up over here for this other project, and you're tired because <laughs> I know you're putting all this other work in uh, in our practice and what you're doing there. So great job! Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I've been blessed to been active so long, and I currently have another project right now that's a restoration project, and that's 2,500 square feet at Encina preparatory high school and that is a proactive mural of just taking your education seriously and where it could lead to who was the original so, artist on that myself oh okay it it, it it ended right in 2019 and I had told myself hey when the weather gets nicer, I'm gonna come out there and I'm gonna seal the project. But 30, uh, 60 days later, we shut down all the schools and I never was able to go back and return. And this year I was able to go back. So the funders, sponsors found a little room for me to, to uh, go out there and make it happen for us. So. That's a pretty big project, and I'll be sharing some pictures about that as well. 
Okay, I am uh, looking for you have sent a the YouTube link. Um, that I, that's where I'm over here now, looking at this other link that you just shared with us. See what's going on on that. I don't think I can show a photo. Did you need to um, to share on your end? I, mean, I was I was I was looking. I was looking if I could share a photo of the mural. Yeah, yeah, let me give you, um, um, I'm gonna make a co-host so that you can share. Okay. Okay, I just did. Okay, so go to more. Where, where do I put the pictures though? I can see the chat. <laughs> Well, you know what? I don't have it. I've had a picture of it laying around here. Right when I need it the most, I can't find it. <laughs> um, you can't find it? I had it. No, I, I just, I don't know where to share the photo at. Oh, just go under, it says share screen. You may need to put your cursor, like hover it by the bottom of your screen because the bar doesn't come up unless you do that. And then there's a green share screen button. You click on that. Make sure whatever. Uh, oh, go ahead. I don't even have that ready to be shared on this phone. That's why. Oh. Um, yeah, no. I, yeah, I don't have that. Sorry for being misleading. <laughs> <laughs> I have it ready for next time. All right. So I know you talked about challenges, you know. Um, have you got politicians involved in this project to support you? Just just the local councilwoman, Katie Venezuela, who runs the district, district two uh, or district four, I'm not up the top of my head, but she's the one that is the active council member for the downtown district mm -hmm. with where the project sits in she's very supportive and has done her part of making it move as smooth as she can the, the only thing that we had an issue with at the beginning was was that caltrans had a kind of a different contract for the artist and now they reworded their contract and it's making it uh, probably a lot a lot smoother for a lot of people to work with caltrans in the in the current way than it was in the past and it was having to do with intellectual rights and the licensing agreements a lot also. of people came to the table how so um mm -hmm. originally the artist had to sign up had to release their intellectual rights and caltrans owns the property so they were owning all the artwork and the intellectual rights behind it and that wasn't going well with a lot of artists, including our man Donald Ginsburg there, who was on our video, he was very right. against that. Himself and other people, I think uh, Josie Talamantes, didn't she fought down in San Diego for it, and probably a handful of others along the way. And the contract has now changed. We have not seen it. We've only been told that from Donald that it's changed and he likes it better and it's gonna work out better, but we haven't gotten that contract yet in our hands so we can distribute that to the artist. So it looks like there has been some improvements. I know we went through, that's what has taken us in the city so long to um, um, just to go think, through all these processes with um, with the foreign road beautification project is because of all the hoops that we had to to go through just to get it going. Right, and probably some of that that you you have done, Twenty First Street and Second Avenue have all been involved in probably making some of these uh, new changes that we're going to address one to two hundred and fifty two hundred people deep. If, if every artist does just one call. 
Right. Which will probably not be. We'll probably have multiple artists do multiple columns in, in, the, in our visionary thought. Have you brought um, Josie Telemontes in as a consult for the work she's been doing in San Diego? She is in. Not as we don't have official counsel for much of what she could be doing because mm -hmm. everything was kind of also driven to the point that they're in San Diego, so they may have a different process that we do in Sacramento because even some of their things that they got on their columns are not allowed on the columns that were over here. But she has been instrumental and helpful in definitely talking about artist rights because she was not. She was not for that. And she said that she was going to, uh, you know, talk, talk to some people as much as she could. And her and Donald and, again, probably some other people that we don't know of from some other mm -hmm. cities are probably facing the same thing. Like, hey, you know, this doesn't make sense to us. So. Well, that's We're just why long waiting. That's why last night I put in the chat, um, we were on your phone, but I don't know if you saw it, is the visual artist rights. Um, oh, and yeah. I dropped that down into the, the link because whatever project that I'm working on, I'm making sure that the visual artist rights are respected, you know, in public art. And um, I'm going to make ready copies of that um, link for everyone to always kind of refer back to that on these projects, um, you know. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's just been it's just been a challenging for for Caltrans and and I'm trying to you know think think like they may think. And some of the conversations I've had, is, you know, they're they're in the the safety travel business that have these great opportunities for artists, but still, their business is safety and travel first. Right. We are secondary. We're trying to fit this, trying to fit in there, and we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I think this was a this year. Or, or whenever they made that contractual change, that was a huge step for everybody. Are you going to apply for the second phase of the beautification project? I mean, for Caltrans, Absolutely. are you guys already at the table on that? You saw that the well, uh, RFP is no. I, well, there's an application out that I, I have. Yeah, I'm gonna share that with you. I, I thought you'd be all over it, but yeah, it's. Um, before I share that link, I have this one pulled up to share. Um. This one is a deadline of May 17th, and it's the Infrastructure and Capacity Building Challenge Grant um, that you guys should think about. Okay. And have, um, you know, Teresa kind of go through it and see if you know, about your eligibility for it. Okay. And it's up to a five year uh, performance on it. Oh, yep, missed that. The deadline is uh, May 17th. Okay. And this one was shared um, with us by Laura Weather, you know, last year. And so, Laura yeah, it's three. Um, she's with Artists Design the Future and Near, Nor Near, Nor Near Northwest Arts Council. And she's one of our other consultants. Um, so, if awarded, you know, it's a 150,000 one-to-one one match. It seems like you guys are raising that money, you know, now, you know, to make those matches at that 150,000. It would be a good, you know, kind of look into it. Um, you Thank know, you, it, sure. the webinar is available for you to kind of look and see if that resource is, um, you know, something that you guys could, think about when you're raising money? Yes, no doubt. All, right. these, all these opportunities. Then the other one that I'll, I'll look up as, as we're talking, Liza, do you have any questions um, for the work that um, Marcos is doing with I really, placemaking? Oh, I really appreciated your um, your presentation, it was really well done. I also wanted to alert you that I have placed the pop-up research station YouTube channel in the chat. And I will add um, your talk separate as a separate clip um, today or on Thursday. 
Um, do I have any specific questions? I don't have any specific questions that immediately come to mind. Um, do you see similar projects happening or models that you followed or other projects that are happening similar to yours in other uh, areas? There's, there was the original project, which we modeled from in San Diego, in Logan, Logan Heights, Radio Logan, Chicano Park. But other ones that have it, what? Are they still they, in existence? Yes, yes, that, that project is still in existence. But that's more of a cultural heritage recognition project. We kind of combined that one with another project that was happening in San Antonio, which they were building the world's largest outdoor museum. And they seem to have more of a, a freestyle art process. So by taking the freestyle and then keeping it to a theme narrative of Sacramento, we combined both of those. And then there's another project that I think it's Overtown. Overtown, it's in Florida. And Overtown yeah. had a- You know where that is, Over, a, Overton. It's not Overtown, it's Overton. T -O Overton, okay, mm -hmm. T-O-N, okay. Overton in Florida, which had a similar, uh, uh, beginning when they had a very thriving area of town and then when the highway projects similar to sacramento went nationwide they wiped out some they made a divide they made an engineered structural divide so that project they're building a, a community space underneath with uh, some greenery probably some murals as well but mostly it seemed to be uh, open space and public gathering spots but the same the same kind of concept we want to we want to we want to bridge some communities we want to embrace what we have in a very dull empty space and move so, it beyond parking lots so when you approach thinking about where your funding is and what kind of structure you want the organization to have um, did you, do you still and have you actively looked at these and other um, organizations to see where they're getting their funding, how they've maintained success, and how they can continue to support as research for your own project? We have we have a we have a small staff, so we're we're only able to go so far, and right. we're actually we're also professional artists as well, so not we don't just we're not just behind the computer i'm in the field for 30 hours a week sometimes and and my partner she has a part-time job and so we're you know we're we do what we can and try to connect to great folks like yourselves that can help us find the way like wow. the two grants that alpha just shared exactly <laughs> actually, i'm gonna uh, i have this one ready to share with you actually right here um, this is the Caltran um, local grant program, and um, this is the first cycle. But I'm going to give you dates after I show you these clips. This is this one I'm going to share with you with the Dos Rios um, Trail, and that's one that's in Sacramento that's been funded. Um, that's on their site being profiled uh, because of the dedication and everything. Um, and you know, um, the Florin Road Community Beautification Project was just uh, dedicated, um, but they had a press conference on March 23rd at Luca Burbank, um, you know, and some great photo ops that happened. But Marco, this is cycle two is coming up. Um, and uh, uh, February 14th, they... Uh, put the call for projects up on the website and the applications are due on the 28th. That's in 10 days. So I don't know, but um, that's like really sitting down and kind of putting it together. Um, that's what we did with the, with, I don't know if you want to talk to Donald about it, but that's what we did with the um, Office of Arts and Culture in the city. And uh, yeah, we had it already kind of like Shona had already the projected numbers with Lisa Moretti with the, the Department of Utilities 
work she was already doing over at Luca Burbank. Um, so we were able to pull these partners together, get the letters of support together, and then, um, you know, nothing beats a failure, but a try, toss our hat in, and then it's how, you know, we were uh, rewarded. But again, the, this grant cycle is up again, and uh, you've seen the kind of benefits of, you know, everybody, just the first round, you know, and most of the projects were funded, 300 were funded throughout this throughout the state. Oh, we'll definitely get on that uh, website right. here after our meeting. <laughs> right, and then um, I wanted to share, uh, see if it's gonna come up, the Dos Rios. Well, that was to the point. Um, and um, so um, I don't know, let's see what they got going on over here. First, I want to just thank Governor Newsom and Caltrans for making this available to us um, for the award. We are so grateful. We are super, super excited. The project that we were awarded, one is a non-motorized trail that will go from the southern end to the center of Rio Del. It will showcase our river and we'll have monuments along the way describing different aspects of the river. It will connect two parts of the city that are kind of hard to get to by foot or bicycle right now because the freeway um, kind of divides the access to these two points. This is an opportunity for the community to access the river. With the pandemic, um, we've become really aware of how important outdoor experiences are and having these experiences close to home is really important. Right now, it's overgrown. We have an illegal dumping problem down here. It's a problem for the river. There'll be more people, so it'll make for a safer experience. We also have the Gateway Project, and that'll be on our main drag, Wildwood Avenue, and we will be doing trees, drought resistant greenery. There is a plan to put exercise equipment in at Memorial Park. And so this would be another opportunity to get out and, and meet each other and, and exercise together. At the heart of community is being able to experience where you live. This benefits not only us, but the future generations. The gateway and the river walk as well will bring the community together. Something that we can all be proud of. It's gonna be tremendous. Yeah, so um, yeah, get on top of it and, and see what you can do. Um, talk with Donald to see if they can push it through. I know Megan is no is transitioning to another um, you know job in the um, you know in, in in the city, but uh, and they were the advocates for sitting down, hacking out that budget and doing all that stuff. You have to have it signed off by. You know a city agency but you're already in the door working with caltrans so um yeah i would advise you to just try to get it done yes i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look at it mm -hmm. and get Teresa on the same conversation here after we're done we may call you back for some of these links but we're definitely that'll gonna... be fine there we'll also actually send them to you and they're available on our menu board um you know if you want to uh go to um, you know, we have a 
on Google Docs, we have a menu for Pop-Up Research Station where all of our menus, because it is a cafe. So of course we have to have a menu, right? And so at the right. end, all of our links and everything go on that menu, but I will sh uh, share you uh, with these links and places to go. Um, okay, thank you. You know, like that. Another project um, Liza is familiar with is that Placemaking USA and how they're coming across the United States um, and dealing with, um, the whole notion of trains. I'm gonna pull that up as, um, I don't know if she's available, but. Um, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know how you wanna talk a little bit about place um, placemaking USA. I was gonna pull up their link while if you meant to talk about what. Well, they, they're, um, you know, we are a smaller relational group that's much more casual. Their organization is, um, they're, they're doing trainings, they're actually working on a broader scale, they have a budget, they have funding, um, and they're uh, a whole, they also have a cafecitos, <laughs> they have a cafe, and they meet regularly and they also do field trips together. And so right now they're doing one that's crossing, visiting various cities that have interesting placemaking um, activities. They're all professionals in the field and um, they have regional groups as well as a national. And here we go. You can take a look at their placemaking train field trip um, that is taking place uh, very, very soon. Actually, they kick off today. Oh, well, hello. Yeah, they're taking that tour and uh, they will be in Florida, Delray Beach, Florida, Jacksonville. Savannah, Georgia. Um, they're going to come on across from Georgia to New York. And they're play, having these conversations with folks that are along railroad stops. Um, what does that have to do with you? I mean, you're doing a massive placemaking project right there in Sacramento. So wow. it would behoove you to get on board this train and see exactly. where they're going with it, you know what I mean? And how you can tie in. Um, we've been a part of the national, the international conversation um, of placemaking um, for the work we're doing over on Tama Shanner and 24th, I, I chimed in last year on the international conversation of how uh, placemaking uh, in parking lots or parking spaces, you know, um, and it was through this organization I linked over there, but this is their, their initiative this year is going through different areas and looking at these abandoned um, um, spaces. Oh, that looks so good. It has nothing to do with anything, but it looks so good. Um, oh, it's lunchtime, lunch <laughs> like, yes. It's lunchtime. <laughs> I mean, it's lunch. And this is uh, them going through and, and visiting uh, the different cities and, you know. Well, that that's a really good link of interest because Sacramento already has that train history. Yes. Of its in its foundational root of becoming a city. So it would make a lot of connection points and sense that something like that would take could take place here. And plus, yeah. you know, what, what we are developing the placemaking museum. I think they're only gonna be, I guess they had did a call for cities that wanted to be part of this. And the other one, you can just follow it online and what they're doing, um, but it's Portland, Oregon, where they're gonna be merging okay. into those, those areas. But most of this is, um, of course, the East Coast. They do have a plan to come through Chicago because um, Liza asked me if I was gonna go and I was like, well, you know, I, I'm following their stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna go to the meetup or not. We we also let the the philanthropy group the Bloomberg mm -hmm. Mayor's Grant. The we were a little late trying to get Sacramento's mayor on board, mm -hmm. but we submitted it anyways to Bloomberg because they gave us an encouragement. Even if you can't get the mayor on board to submit it, you know, if you have a great idea, so we let we let the Bloomberg group know mm -hmm. about this project. And of all places, Elk Grove submitted a Bloomberg grant with the Artners as their art partner to develop some of the things that they want to see in Elk Grove. And we're on board with them and 
we'll see where that goes. And it's a very similar model of cultural heritage representation mm -hmm. to the new the, to the new way that Elk Grove is rapidly developing. So we we do have our name out there for what we're doing. So we are excited and, and appreciate these more these further leads by you, Alpha and Lisa, to continue the movement because it is a it is a good project. Yeah, I want to look up where well, you said Overtown and then you mentioned Overton in Florida. Um, and my yeah. relationship uh, with Overton is I, with my project manager, LaVon Pettis, we went down to Art Basel and, um, you know, um, actually did a pop-up or Phantom Gallery in one of the Carver buildings. Um, and it was a renovation by one of the African-American developers there. Um, and we did a whole a row of pop-up galleries during Art Basel down there. Um, and um, then we also went the second year and did the same thing in the Lyric Opera where they had rebuilt that area down, down there mm. and got a chance to, we're part of the report that the redevelopment agency in Overton, uh, so Phantom Gallery is part of their report, you know, their annual report for that year. Uh, that was I did. I did put that story that I'd heard on the news on my, Facebook link mm -hmm. or my Facebook page. So it may be it may be on there, the video to that Overton or oh, really? Overtown. Okay. So um while oh. you're talking, I'm gonna go research that. Okay. So we I'm gonna look for it myself. <laughs> uh, okay, look for it and then put it in the in the I'm link. See if I can even find, so I mean, can find it. it. Yeah, let me. I mean, you know, it, it it's like when you go, when you go, you go like, go find something like a picture. It's like, oh boy, how do I find that? <laughs> right. Display, play memories, videos. No. Yeah, it would probably take me a minute to, to get it. I couldn't even tell you where. So it's interesting, the uh, history of Overtown, just like in a lot of major cities, um, even here in Bronzeville, where African-American were not able to live, they stay in downtown Miami. Um, so they would be maybe the drivers um, that would drive their, you know, white, um, you know, um, bosses, you know, to the South. But they would have to go over to Overton because Overtown, Overton was the only place African Americans could stay in Miami. You know, uh, and um, it was a, a great nightlife there. You know, it was, um, you know, again, hotels where they could stay and everything like that. Um, but pretty much they were not permitted to be in the downtown area uh, and other areas of uh, Miami like here in people that migrated, African-Americans that migrated up to um, the North and here in Chicago, they were red zoned uh, in just this area of Bronzeville when they first migrated up, you know, in terms of housing and uh, being able to live and work and be educated in this area. They weren't allowed to be um, in the other parts of the city. So that, and it's other history of Overton, but that's the history that, you know, uh, and, you know, and it was underdeveloped for decades. You know, I, I was surprised when I went down and I saw uh, roosters running around, you know what I mean? I'm like, roosters, come on now, right? Okay, my orientation for the, for the South and for, for Miami is the urban part of it, you know what I mean? Like that, that comes from Cuba living. They're very <laughs> That that comes directly from the familiarity of the the people who settled there from you know leaving Cuba. Very very comfortable with roosters. There's one. I lived in Little Havana for a little while, a long time ago. Roosters. <laughs> I'm like what? And then yeah. and then over in uh, Coconut Grove, they have um, uh, what? peacocks that fly around like pigeons you know like <laughs> you know like um uh, it was just amazing to me i got photographs of those uh roosters running around i couldn't believe it really um 
yeah, that was weird. I mean, but it was just I part of you. living. And then they have Little Havana um, and Little Haiti is another uh, area that they have over there, uh, you know, so. I, I found the link. You know how to share it? Um, it's on, I don't. It's on YouTube. The title is The Under Deck Planner's Dream of Shading Overtown, Downtown okay. Walk. Okay, so what you're going to do is go into um, YouTube and where it says okay. share. Okay. And then share it. And then I'll have a link for you and take the link and copy it and just set it into the chat. Then I could grab it from there. So go to YouTube and then copy the link. Uh huh. All right. Yeah, I just thought it was very interesting, um, you know, but, um, you know, in, in terms of um, how it's grown down there in the last five years um, from going down for my first Art Basel there and doing a pop-up with the Phantom Gallery and then going back the second year and we did the pop-up. Yes. Got it? Did you want to share? Oh, you put it in the, you're putting it in the oh. chat? Okay. Put it in the chat to see if it works. Okay, let me grab it. And um all right. So we got very excited when we seen this project in its development as well, because of what some of the things that they said. And also just looking at the visionary yeah. possibilities. Workspace Student Energy Under Deck will be developed as a front highway to connect the historic Overtown neighborhood with downtown Miami. And local fans Leanne Morahone has details. She's live right now for us in Overtown with more. Leanne, fill us in. That's right, Christy. This project is not set to be completed for at least another two years, but today we're getting an inside look at it. It represents a future, one that is overflowing with diversity, the common good. Dr. Nelson Adams is talking about the underdeck, a public space set to be built under a newly imagined I-395 as part of the Signature Bridge Project. As Miami's District 5 Commissioner Christine King explains, it's a partnership between FDOT and the city of Miami. I'm sure we will get assistance from other sources, but the major source will be the state of Florida Department of Transportation. It was only after the bridge project was approved back in 2019 that a group formed to help transform the space beneath it. Underneath the bridge has not been a, a good place. There's been crime, there's been homelessness. This seemingly represented a great opportunity for us to uh, move from, from bad to good and to the best opportunity for a green space for our community. And so the idea for the under deck was born. 33 acres of green space, a heritage trail, water features, dog parks, and more. Spanning from historic Overtown East towards the Perez Art Museum in downtown Miami. It has the potential to be amazing. The construction of the original I-395 and I-95 were a detriment to Overtown. They're hoping the under deck will do the opposite. A very vibrant uh, community of, of African Americans and Afro-Caribbeans was separated irreparably. It almost decimated that community. The under deck will be one of those projects that will bring the life back to this community. So when it comes to feedback for this project, the committee says they want as much feedback from as many people as possible. In fact, recently they were taking input about what people thought about perhaps renaming the under deck. That survey has now closed, but there are more opportunities via Zoom. There's an upcoming meeting on August 25th and another one on September 7th in person at the Overtown Performing Arts Center. Information on that is on our website, local10.com. Reporting live in Overtown, Leanne Morejon, Local 10 News. It's like Miami's answer to the Highlander in New York. Thank you, Leanne. We are getting some more information about a major project in Miami. A that was cool. Glad you. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was pretty Thank cool. You. Yeah. 
when we see when we seen that we seen that by accident because we just mm-hmm. we just happened to be on one of those uh, uh, informative morning shows, and we were just like watching it, and I was like, man, that's like what we're kind of doing, but differently, but the same concept of reconnecting the divide that the freeway has caused to help out with travel, but yet divide a city. Yeah, and that divide is between um, what's, uh, what do you call it? Um, what is it, South? Um, where's the park right there, Southside Park? Southside Park, yes. And then, Southside Park got the South Park divided. Then it goes down to, now you got William Land Park on the other side, which is a more kind of, it was affluent at one point in that whole Broadway strip. Mm-hmm. And um, then we're going further down into like, now they got the, um, what is it? The hospital district that's along um, the that hospital corridor. District. Also on Broadway, they are building a new bridge to connect to West Sacramento. So that area is supposed to gain more uh, general local traffic. So we see this project benefiting that. I don't. I can't see Caltrans making any green areas underneath there, like Overton. But oh no, they do have they do have a perimeter for some greenery though, so they can add some greenery on the outside and have the murals, uh, the interior part. I saw how they were removing their strategy for removing homeless camps that were around that underpass that were right there, um, uh, going over to South. Um, Southside Park, you know, and then under there is a lot of those homeless camps. That 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 probably will still remain. Now, I don't think it was a, really a plan. It seemed like they were just moving them out of the way for construction. But we'll see. We will see what you know. Construction safety, well, not construction, but more just that they couldn't have people underneath there while they were doing construction. So now that that areas are lifted we will may see that occupation return. But I, I was reading where um, um, Sacramento has um, created this um, housing program for the unhoused um, and they um, have to give them these um, trailers, give them temporary, not just tents, but temporary shelters. Um, and they have like, what, an acre and a half, 1.3 acres that they're able to be on and they have to, they can remain there until they find permanent housing. This is something that happened last week. I was listening to, um, you know, the, the city council meeting and then also saw the news report where they're doing something kind of like the lead the, you know, California is always a state that is in front, you know, of modeling and t- t- testing out things for the rest of the nation. Um, right. Yeah, but I, I saw the encampments when I came and businesses saying we can't even deal with this, you know, for our, like Starbucks, you know, right there by Lamb Park. We can't even deal with this and, and maintain our customers um, without feeling them feeling frightened about coming down here. Um, and then I looked again another week or so and that encampments were, um, fenced off and that's again because you said the construction that's going on with Caltran and does Caltran have any responsibility for um, finding ways to deal with the people that are sleeping under their bridges I would imagine so but I couldn't tell you what Caltran's policies are I'm not asking you to speak against them. I'm just asking you like, in terms of social responsibility. I mean, we come in and we talk about the arts and how the arts can beautify and transition and change neighborhood. But but what are the other things that that are impactful um, to a community when we're addressing other, are pitted against social issues? Do you ever think about that? Like, I know you've got a lot to think about in terms of the artistic um, part of the placemaking that you're doing, but part of um, our grant with, um, you know, with uh, Caltran was that we didn't use it as a thing to replace 
and you know the homelessness that is happening right there on Florin and Tamas Shanner with the homeless population, we had to find ways of not displacing them. They're already displaced and trying to move them out. You know what I mean? So how we, do we? Work we had some. That? We did. We did have some thoughts that as this project moved along, that some of the people that are in that housing unoccupied housing community they mm -hmm. may be able to be a part of this project as well and another further thought is when this project started elevating and we were actually on site that we would create some like what we have with our mobile mural walls that we would have some surface that people could participate from that community to feel that they're a part of it. And it's not just to replace them, but they're welcome. I mean, mm -hmm. and we've never really put it out there that just because we're doing this project that we expect anybody to relocate. It's just, we're just gonna uplift the area and we'll see where it goes. Um, I was well, doing my taxes yesterday before our big um, cohort meeting <laughs> last night. I have been working on my taxes. And because now that I'm doing uh, business operating um, you know, uh, in Sacramento, I had to do a BOT like everybody else on the team. That meant I had to report my um, taxes you know, for out of state um, and for the state of California. So I was going down all, of, down all of the exemptions and things that I can get tax credit for. And one of the things was if you're an employee, you got tax relief for employing homeless populations. I don't know how much it gave you because I didn't check the box, but I was going like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. You could, you know, get relief um, for employing um, homeless populations. So maybe that's something that as an organization, mm -hmm. you guys could look into those programs where, you know, it's, you know, being able to bring folks on, um, and employ them to help out on these sites. You always need an extra hand, you know, with the labor out there. Did you by chance we could look take at, a look? Look at the effectiveness of that. What do you mean? I mean, did you see does having that in place actually work? Do people, I mean, in this context, you're actually considering it and recommending it. I'm wondering how successful that tax write-off is that's a good hypothesis to to look okay. in into and then put it out there as something to explore but i just had enough time to finish submitting this tax thing that i had to do as a self-employed person <laughs> you know and go through two days later with all the stuff i had to do in terms of my taxes and then look at i haven't filed taxes in, in sacramento since 1999 or something like that and then so to look at all the tax exempt breaks that i as a consultant, you know, and a, a sole proprietor would get by filing over there, I just ran across it. And then at that moment, I had to get on to another meeting that lasted two hours later. So I'm just now talking about it, but that's a good thing for me to research, right? To look at what I'm sure that the state of California has a statistic somewhere and someone is taking this information that's being reported and then with employment agencies and just seeing how effective it is. And, um, you know, and it, it's something that we can also look at at the museum uh, in terms of making sure that if we're talking about not having um, uh, people displaced in the areas that they are in, we always talk about, we meaning the museum talks about in our grant language, wraparound services. What are the services that we, not only as a museum, but as a nonprofit community-based organization, offer to constituents or to people that support the, the program or to our neighbors, what other programs do we um, offer? You know what I mean? Because if we're saying we're impactful, that we're bringing the community to our projects, then in that way we, we form these relationships with people. And then we can look at some of the other core systematic problems that, that are happening with them. As an example, uh, if a, a youth comes to our program and there's no food at home, 
Um, they just left school and they're hungry. You know what I mean? So what other services, when we find out and we work with them, when they're not forthcoming about their situation, but the more we work with them as the arts and create these comfortable or safe environments, then they're able to kind of share things. Then we're able to send them to a wraparound services. There's the family doesn't have any food at home. Oh, okay, there's a food locker, you know, um, right here, you know, in the incubator or Florin Road, you know, uh, um, market complex. And here's the, um, you know, uh, traveler's aid over here that could assist the, the family. And these are the days that the food lockers open. Or here, here's a stipend that our our token or a card where you can go over a voucher, or you can go over and get a sandwich somewhere, you know, or you can be referred into some other services. Those are things that we look at as artists that are doing programming in a community-based organization within um, this this project. Um, some of the other things that we're gonna have to take the task, is I was uh, meeting with Lisa Moretti with the city of um, Sacramento Utilities and she's our project manager lead from the uh, city of Sacramento. And we looked at that hypothesis of what changes will happen once these chairs or these big metal chairs are placed in a sculpture in an area where I saw a homeless person taking a bath outside. When I drove up into the parking lot and I was like, okay, great. Is this where we're gonna be like, you know, staging, you know, the first installation of these big cheers, you know, and um, changing the whole parking lot and adding a concrete mural on the ground and dealing with, and, and then I, okay. So that was one thing where I'm like, okay, how are we gonna address that issue where someone is publicly out there by the dumpster taking a bath, right? And um, some of the other things of when we were <laughs> out there doing some of the surveying and, and envisioning, someone was to sleep underneath the bushes there, you know, and he act like we were really, really disturbing his sleep and his peace as if that was the bedroom. Um, and then he eventually got up and just like walked off and discussed that we were bothering him, but we were actually, with the property owner surveying outside and looking at and envisioning what can happen and what needs to happen. So what happened was the owner came out and he cut down all those bushes. You saw Marco when you went over there that those bushes on that right. other wall were cut really low, right. um, exactly. which made more work for the artist than that long wall, but it eliminated where people were behind those bushes. You know what I mean? Um, sleeping and, and staying and stuff. So I don't know, but I just saw this tax relief for employing homeless populations and maybe connect with the EDD office or connect with social services um, because there's some people that are, you know, what veterans, you know, you get tax relief for, um, and then there's other programs where if you're hiring veterans, you know, they pay the employer um, you know, um, you guys have this nonprofit organization and you are employing pe people and artists to come out, you know, and so you have, you know, people that have construction backgrounds, you have people that are veterans, you know, that, um, you know, and other, you know, career that could come and help and they are in these homeless populations. With, with that that you're sharing, those are all fabulous and great ideas. We've always tried to stay on our end, open to people that could that are in that arena already. Mm -hmm. So if there is someone that's an activist for homeless situation, homeless possibilities and situations for betterment, we encourage them as leaders to talk to us and how we could uh, facilitate some of these ideas that they may have that we're not thinking about. Like some of the ideas you just shared right now. That's what our, our what we're not able to do is to manage that, to take right, on another exactly. large task. And then all of a sudden I'm working, trying to find great things for these people that have some situations. And then I'm not focusing on trying to do the art, but I would like to meet some people that are interested in taking this conversation to another level with this project 
what I think about this project is I don't really think anyone, everybody was cheering for us. Like, yes, we want you to have it. And it's taken so long that we haven't bridged some of those connections, but we are now because it's real. It's, it's really going to happen. It's really going to make it go. And only, but the only reason why I think we haven't been getting a bad time about it is because construction has been there so long. It's almost become the way it, it's normal now. It's been happening so long. But once them fences go down and they open up those parking lots again, then we're going to be like, hey, what are you guys painting? What are you guys doing? What's going on? And hopefully by then, we've met some positive other leaders out there that can help with homeless and, and other movements that are going to make this whole area just uplift, just, just to go. And we're, we're excited to be a part of that. So, right, exactly. Yeah. I do, I'm going to have to cut us off. I have to take off to another meeting at 12:30, but I wanted to thank you very much for having me here and share my video and share a little bit more of the update. Thank you. Thank you. And and, and especially you were available at the spur of the moment. I'm like, "Hey, join us on Pop-Up Research <laughs> Station and talk about your project. I really wanted to <laughs> see what's running you ragged because every time I saw you, you looked like you hadn't had any it is this sleep, project, like, you know. yeah, this one, the Encina, <laughs> and the and the and the the Florin Road were all just right on the same time. Yeah, I got two two more two more. I I can share my screen now if you want to see it real quick. The mural and Encina. Mm -hmm. I can show you that. You can you have the link or uh, you or oh, you got it ready to share or no? Got it ready to share. Okay, great. As you take um, it off. So that's one. Is that a, is that paint or a, a ceramic? That's paint. Wow. It looks that's almost like tapestry. It looks like a. The, the building. The texture from the building. Look at that. The texture from the building is the weirdest building. It's got like these, if I zoom in, can you, can you see it if I zoom in closer? Yeah, and you can see the, the wall. The unpainted wall, you can see what, why. It looks oh, like a huge tapestry, you know, like a quilt. I think this is yeah. the same effect that the, the mural at Food Max is going to have because it has that texture like that too. So wow. that's why Shona was envisioning that whole quilt of different nations, of different uh, they, races. The food, the food Max has the cinder block. So it does have some, some texture of, of non-even surface. Let me see if I can show you another one real quick. And then here's one of the of the height. So it's 20 feet high by 120 wow. feet long. And where's Encina High located? It's near Arden Mall. Okay, all right, over there. Wow. And then I got a cool one to share right here. And I'll just, if I can share this real quick. And this is something that's gonna happen for us next week. And let's see. If I can find it. Oh man, I'm not gonna be able to get it. Too long. I'll just tell you instead. Is it on your um Facebook? Oh, there it is. No, no, Did that's not the one I no, I hit that accidentally. <laughs> uh it is it, it hasn't been announced, but I'll just share it with you and Lisa. But next week. We are going to, the Ardeners are going to be honored by the city of El Grove at the city council for a volunteer mayor's award. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. We're doing all right. Yeah. So I'm going to announce it tomorrow. Is El Grove, um, do they do their city council meetings via Zoom? I believe they're on some type of link. So I could go and, and look at the city of El Grove and then see when their public meeting is. And then that way I could. 
watch it. That's how I do yes. the city of Sacramento. Yes, it'll be Wednesday, April 26. Congratulations again for all the Thank hard you. work you're doing and preservation, um, perseverance that you're doing. Perseverance. And, uh huh, and preserving, you know, um, history um, and creating this place making project. So, any other links well, that I'll, that I'll, um, any other links that come up, you know, with opportunities with bridgeways and, and highways, I'll, uh, I'll send you. Please do. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys later. We'll talk again.